So far, we have talked about adding and subtracting fractions with different, different denominators. We've talked about adding and subtracting mixed numbers with uh, different denominators. <clears throat> and today we talked about something very specific, a very specific situation that happens when you are subtracting two mixed numbers and the, sm the first fraction is smaller than the second fraction. So I'm going to tell you what to do in that situation. Let's look at this one, number 5. We have 4 and 3 eighths minus 3 and 1 half. First thing I need to do always is find a common denominator. So I have 8 and 2, and I'm going to find some common multiples. 2, 4, 6, 8, and then 8, I just have 8, and there you go. But they, these two denominators, if I find all the multiples, they have 8 in common, so these denominators need to be 8 in order for me to be able to subtract them. They have to have the same denominator. So, I'm going to erase this. I know my least common denominator is 8. So now, I need to change these denominators to 8. Well, 3 8 is already has an 8 in the denominator, so I don't have to change that fraction, but I do need to change the 1 half. That is a 2 in the denominator, so I'm going to put an 8 here. And um, if I multiplied 2 times 4, I would get 8. So I have to multiply the top times 4. 1 times 4 is 4. So 1 half is equivalent, equivalent to 4 eighths. So I'm changing this to 4 eighths. I have 3 and 4 eighths. So I'm going to rewrite that. 4 and 3 eighths minus 3 and 4 eighths. Now there's a problem here. I cannot take 4 eighths from 3. I cannot uh, subtract 4 from 3 and get a positive number. <clears throat> it's like if I were doing something like this. Thir Oops. Hold on. If I were doing something like this. Let me try that again. If I had 13. 13 minus 4, I can't take the 4 from the 3, so I would have to borrow from the 1, subtract 1 from it, I would get a 0, then add 10 to the 3, and that becomes 13, and then I would be able to subtract it. Now you have to do something very similar when you are subtracting two fractions that have, or two, two, two mixed numbers that have fractions uh, in which the first one is, is smaller than the second one. You will borrow. Now I'm going to show you the concept behind borrowing in this situation. It'll look a little complicated, but I want to explain what's going on before I show you the shortcut, which is really fast. So <clears throat> I can't take 4 from 3, so I borrow from this whole number. And this becomes a 3. So I subtracted 1 from that 4. And I'm going to add that 1 whole to the 3 eighths. Now the only way I can do that is by changing that 1 whole that I took from here into uh, a fraction that has the same denominator as this fraction. Now 8 eighths, well a whole number, a whole number has uh, um, has the same, or, or, or one whole has the same numerator as a denominator. So I could change that one whole to 2 over 2, 8 over 8, a billion over a billion, it doesn't matter. But I am choosing to change it to 8 over 8 so that uh, I can add it very easily to 3 eighths. So... I'm going to take my 8 eighths that I took out of the 4, add it to the 3 eighths, and now my 4 and 3 eighths becomes 3, and 8 plus 3 
Let's see, 8 plus 3 is 11, and my denominator stays the same. Now I have 3 and 11 eighths minus 3 and 4 eighths. Now I can subtract these. This, this numerator is bigger than this numerator, okay? Notice that this, um, notice that this first uh, fraction, or this first mixed number, is exactly what we were trying to get to avoid in our previous lesson. Whenever we had an answer that looks like this, like 3 and 11 eighths, we say, hey, that has a, uh, that has a, a, a mixed number and a, an improper fraction mixed together. We can't have that in our answer. And you can't have it in your answer, that's true, but we are actually doing it on purpose in our problems to make it so that just so that we can make this, this numerator bigger so that we can subtract it from this. Okay, so we've done that. If we subtract 3 minus 3, so I'm going to rewrite it over here, 3 and 11 eighths minus 3 and 4 eighths. Now I can subtract this very easily. I just subtract the whole number and I subtract the fraction. And I have 3 minus 3 is 0 and 11 minus 4 is 7 and the denominator is 8. So uh, my answer is just 7 eighths. Now, let me show you the really fast way of doing all of that stuff I just explained. I'm going to do it with the same problem. This is the shortcut. In order to, uh, so let's, let's go back to our um, least common denominator here. So now I have 4 and 3 eighths minus 3 and 4 eighths. Can't take 4 from 3. So what you do is take the first one. And you just subtract 1, it becomes 3. The denominator stays the same. And you add the numerator and the denominator. And you put it on top. So 4 and 3 eighths becomes 3 and 11 eighths. Minus 3 and 4 eighths. And I get 7 eighths done. See how fast that was? But I needed to explain what the reason was that we're doing all this stuff. But now that you know, you can just... Even though we did talk about it in class, but now that you know it, uh, we can, you can use the shortcut. So I'm going to apply that to the next one. I have 9 and 1 sixth minus 3 and 5 eighths. Um, I need to find a common denominator, so I, find, I write down my sixes and my eighths. So I have 6... 12, 18, 24, and for 8, I have 8, 16, 24, and they have 24 in common, so my least common denominator is 24. So, now, I'm going to change my fractions, 1 sixth and 5 eighths two fractions that have 24 in the denominator. Okay, so 6 times 4 is 24. Since I multiply the bottom by 4, I have to multiply the top by 4, and I get 4 over 24. So that's my first fraction. And 8 times 3 is 24, so I multiply the top times 3, and I get 15 24. So that's my second fraction. So now I have 9 and 4 24 minus 3 and 15 24. Now, I, if you look at these fractions, the first one is 4 24, the second one is 15 24. So I can't take 15 from 4, so I'm going to use my little trick to change, to borrow from my 9, change it to a mixed number that has an uh, improper fraction so that my first numerator is bigger than my second numerator and I can, I can subtract them. So, once again, here's the trick. Subtract 1 from the 9, becomes an 8. My denominator stays the same. And I add the top and I add the numerator and the denominator. I get 28. And then the second, oops, the second part of my problem stays the same. So now I have 8 and 28 24 minus 3 and 15 24 um, I'm going to put that over here. 5 minus 3. 
or it's 8 minus 3 is 5. My denominator is going to be 24. 28 minus 15 is 13. There. Done. Not too many steps. That's how you do it.